Hello. For today's video, I actually have something a little bit different. Instead of a tutorial or instruction video, I have a product unboxing and first look uh, video for you. So what you see is the Mosquito Hot End by Slice Engineering. This is the standard version of the Mosquito, not the Magnum version. With the Mosquito, when you purchase it, it does have the option of coming with nozzles, uh, thermistors, heaters, fans, etc. I have plenty of those on hand, so I just went and ordered the Mosquito itself. That will be the big thing I want to look at here. So with the Mosquito, it is a 1.75 millimeter uh, only hot end. When you purchase it, it does come with a few things. The first and most important thing are these two orange creamsicle popsicles. These things are delicious. You get some Allen keys, which if you've built a 3D printer, you should have a million of these by now. It does come with some mounting hardware. Uh, depending on your printer and how it mounts to the printer, you may or may not need this. With the Voron, uh, with the tool head that's been designed for it, you will not need this hardware. You will need uh, M2.5 by 25 millimeter long screws. You will need two of those. And then lastly, you have the hot end itself in this bag. And this right here is the Mosquito hot end. Out of the bag, it comes mostly assembled. All you need to do is add your thermistor, heater, and nozzle, and install it in your printer. With the Voron Quick Change tool head, you'll have to print out the Mosquito compatible holder. And it installs relatively simply. You take the two halves, put them together. You need to print off also the Bowden tube adapter from the Mobius. You take your two M2.5 by 25 millimeter screws, you screw them in here. You take your other screws and screw the two halves together. Your thermistor wire comes out the side and comes straight up. And then the heater wire comes out the other side, wraps around, and then you run it up the channel of the front tool plate and then up into where all the other wires are. And that is how you assemble the tool head for the Mosquito for your Voron. Now onto the hot end itself. This thing here is a beaut. Um, just looking at the finish and machining on here, uh, the anodizing and nickel plating of the heater. I do not see any blemishes, I don't have any sharp corners, I don't see any burrs, uh, all holes are really clean, I don't see any, you know, chatter or machining marks anywhere. This thing is definitely, you can see where the money went when it came to the manufacture of this thing. There's a lot of intricate in machining, um, ask any machinist, copper is a pain to work with. These tiny little fans here, I can see where the work went when it came to making this thing. So comparing the Mosquito to a standard V6, uh, you can see where the Mosquito gets its name from. It is much smaller than a standard V6. And the first thing you're gonna notice is the size of the heatsink. On the Mosquito, it's practically tiny compared to the V6 where the heatsink takes up most of the volume of the heat, or of the hot end itself. Heater block wise, um, they are almost the same size, but the one right here for the Mosquito has a lot more mass around the nozzle itself. And then also this one is copper with a nickel coating. Now on to some of the mechanical things that I think make this outstanding compared to a standard V6. Um, the first thing is the filament path. On a V6, you have a heat break that screws into the heat sink and the block itself. So you have a Bowden tube that comes down the heat sink to roughly about here where it connects to a heat break which goes down into the heater block where it connects to a nozzle essentially. So what that means is structurally the heat break is holding this all together and then also in terms of the filament path you're going from it's three diameters in a relatively short period of time, whereas this one is two. So if you've ever done a retraction and pulled out the filament, 
out of a hot nozzle on a V6, you'll see this big bulb on the end, and it's usually much wider than the uh, filament itself. This can cause jamming issues. Um, you see that a lot on the Prusas with the MMU. That's why they actually made the heat break a little bit wider on the uh, MMU hot end on the Prusa Mark III. That's so that big blob actually has room to move and doesn't jam, although, you know, Looking at some other reviewer videos, uh, it does seem to cause some heat creep issues in those regards. On this one, it's a very constrained filament path. You have this titanium tube that comes down all the way to it connects with the nozzle. It's all one piece. It's hard to see, but it is one piece all the way through. I can't see any steps in there. And then also in terms of heat creep, this is the big selling point. Pretty much all the heat, and there's thermal images of this thing online, stays in the heater block. So you have a copper heater block, it's nickel coated, which is apparently supposed to try and, you know, it keeps the heat in. Um, so you don't need to run this with a sock like a lot of people do with a V6. Um, right there you can see there's a tiny little gap between the heater block and where the heat sink starts, there's very little metal mass there for heat to transfer up. And then once it transfers up though, any that does, copper is a great heat sink material versus aluminum. They're both good, but copper's better. The fan is just gonna blow that heat right away. And then any residual heat is not gonna make it up this titanium tube here. Now, the reason they can get away with this is the heat break on the Mosquito is not structural. On a V6, I'm sure you've seen posts and pictures of people who've tightened this too much or had a nozzle crash and broken their heat brakes. The heat brake is the only thing holding the heater on. Uh, with the Volcano, it's a much bigger heater. And then with the Super Volcano, it's even massive, but all that weight is on this tiny little heat brake. And you want that heat brake being as thin as possible to prevent heat from traveling up. With the Mosquito, uh, you're not going to break the heat break, really, because it's not structural. Now, yes, some heat will make it up through the side here into this aluminum um, heat sink mount frame dealy here, but that's not really a concern because not too much heat, again, is going to make it up here. You're going to have a fan blowing on it, and this is not uh, touching the filament at all. The filament path in terms of heat design looks, you know, amazing. Like, I can see the work and the modeling and the simulations that went into this to work out this design. And, uh, you know, as somebody who's dabbled in machining, I'm impressed. Now, another thing, right here, this right here, in my opinion, is something that not a lot of people realize. Your nozzle is where most of the filament melts. Um, it's not mounting in the heater block. The heater block transfers the heat into the nozzle. So you wanna have this heating up as efficiently as possible. When you look down at V6, you see the heat sink right there. That's either titanium or steel, um, which aren't great conductors of heat versus, uh, let's say copper. So what that means, is when you screw this in to your V6 heater, most of the heat is transferring in from the side. With a Mosquito, the heat's transferring from the side and the top, well, back, depends on your orientation. So you're gonna heat transfer in from the side and the top. It may not seem like much, but that can dump a lot more heat into your nozzle quicker, uh, which means when you are printing faster, it can make a big difference in terms of consistent extrusion. Now, another thing is, uh, according to the documentation for V6, you need to torque the nozzle to three uh, Newton meters and you need to torque it hot. Um, if you can hear behind, my printer is currently running. These are recommended 1.5 Newton meters of torque. You can buy their fancy torque wrench. I printed a design off Thingiverse and again, this is not something you can really do with a V6, but with a Mosquito, you can screw your nozzle in and, you know, torque it. 
just like that. You don't need to worry about breaking your heat sink. You don't need to find you know that wrench to hold this with a wrench when you tighten it because you know this thing isn't going to break in your hands. And by the way, that's it. This is how I torqued it, and then I put it in my printer, and I have about 20 hours on it printing so far, and it hasn't leaked at all because again, you're sealing brass onto copper, or you know if you get the van uh, vanadium nozzle or nozzle X because this takes any standard E3D um, or clone hardware. Um, it's sealing on copper. Different metals require different torques for sealing on each other. Uh, copper being a relatively soft metal, you know, 1.5 newton meters of torque. Cold is enough to seal it. I haven't had any leak issues and, not, and I've checked it. The nozzle hasn't come loose. It's still torqued to the same amount. I, I can install this as is and I, I wouldn't be worried about it leaking. Uh, so that's another plus. Now for installing your thermistor and heater, uh, it's a little bit of a different setup than a V6 with the set screws and uh, friction fit of the heater. With these, your heater and thermistor both just kind of slide in. So you're wondering what holds it in place, what, you know, keeps it from falling out. And the answer is boron nitride thermal paste. Um, this, you can buy it from Slice Engineering. I'm sure you can you know, also get alternatives industrially uh, for this product, but for the price and the amount you get, just grab it when you grab the Mosquito itself. You need this. Uh, you can skip out on their heaters, their nozzles, their semesters. You do need this paste to make this hot end work properly. This was, I believe, $9 or $10, and this is enough for multiple, multiple um, installations. This is more than enough. This will last you a while. You only really need one tube unless you're replacing your heater every week. So anyways, what you normally would do is you would take this, you would put some in there uh, or coat your heater. It comes with these little cotton swabby things. And essentially you want to fill any void between the heater and the heat block and the thermistor and the heat block. Install it. You'll probably have some ooze out both ends, just wipe it off. And then you need to let it sit for, I believe it's an hour to kind of harden up a bit and then go ahead and install this in your printer heat it up to temperature and that will cure it and it will lock it in place and provide a very good thermal transfer. Um, a note on hardware, because you have these two screws here that kind of act as uh, safety screws to prevent anything from falling out, when it comes to your thermistor, a lot of the uh, styles off AliExpress have this like crimped shrink wrap fitting. Those don't work. Um, the reason for that is this screw sits over the hole, so you need to get the style like the uh, legit E3D V6 thermistor style, where it is just the metal and then a uh, wire. I actually don't have any on hand because the only set I have is currently in my printer that's running another Mosquito uh, for testing. So you do need to ensure that it sits uh, below that so you can screw that in. And then I do recommend because you are screwing, I believe these are steel of some sort, into copper. Um, when you have dissimilar metals, especially with screws, I do recommend using some anti-seize on the screws themselves. Um, just make sure you get, you know, I, I use some copper-based anti-seize. As long as it's rated for the temperature that this can heat up to, the stuff I use is like 900 something degrees Celsius. So I have no worries about using that. So that is a, uh, a quick overview of the Mosquito and a quick unboxing of it. I will do a video uh, going more into detail uh, once I get some hours on the Mosquito itself. As I said, I got two of these. Uh, this one's right here waiting on another Voron build. The first one I unbox is in my printer right now currently running. And right off the bat, just looking at it, I do notice more consistent flow. Um, the first layers to appear to be smoother and I am noticing retractions are a lot cleaner and again with it being an enclosed printer um, I'm not noticing any heat creep issues and that's with a smaller fan than what I could get away with with the V6. With this I was running a Sunon uh, 20 millimeter thick server grade fan to prevent heat creep issues. With this one I'm running a generic 4010 um, Chinese fan, generic $2 fan, 
that's been PWM down to 60%. And again, no heat creep issues. So that was a quick video just going over a unboxing of the Mosquito itself and some uh, quick thoughts on it. If you'd like to see anything more like this, just let me know below. And if you have any questions, again, feel free to ask them below. Thank you, and have a great day.